Hi everyone. So um, it's my great pleasure to be here to talk about like vector search at Uber. I know vector search is a very popular topic. You know, we have a two great session this morning talking about LLM, the hybrid search. So today I'm going to talk about some of our exploration at Uber on this on this particular topic. Um, about myself, um, so I'm Yu Peng. Um, I lead the search platform and the real-time data platform at Uber. Um, you know, at Uber, we are heavy adopter and contributors to open source technologies. So myself, I'm also um, like a Pino committer uh, and PMC. So for real-time data platform at Uber, we use um, Apache Kafka, Flink, Pinot, and for search, our entire platform is built on top of Apache to see. Um, before I talk about like the vector search, I want to give you folks that overview our, our major search use cases across Uber. So like I assume like most people are familiar with like what Uber is and hopefully you are an active Uber user as well. Um, so one of the major Uber use cases is uh, we call Uber Eats. So where uh, we deliver things, uh, not only like the dishes, but also other like, like grocery to the users. And uh, Uber Eats is actually a very important search use case because if you look at for any eater come to the Uber Eats app, there are many two ways to discover things. One is through the feed, where you open up the app, you see the restaurant display, and the other is search. And actually both feed and search are powered by the search platform. Um, and it's a very, also a very interesting and challenging problem because you know, uh, most people when they open up the app, like they actually may not know what they really want. So we have to take a lot of like additional efforts like about like personalization and guessing user intent and actually the you know, vector search help us a lot we realize on this part which I'll talk about later in the in the next few slides. Another use case is about like maps. This is where you use like Uber Eats to take a ride uh, and there are multiple places like how search is used. Like we can like open up the app, type in some like keywords and then the application will try to make recommendations. And this actually is a surprisingly complicated like problem uh, because you can see there are uh, not only about like the keyword text search, but there are also additional like complications. Like for example, we do reverse geocoding. You can use the current light, latitude, longitude. We will try to do the reverse lookup to figure out like what's the location you are interested in. And in addition to that, we also do the location translation. Like think about like, um, let's say you are at the current location, but this hotel may be like pretty like large range, right? So think about like, it's not like just a point, but a rectangle, right? So like where to the to meet the driver, this actually become like a ge uh, geometry like problem because based on your current GPS location, we try actually try to figure out like what's the best exact like meeting point on this on the map. Considering about the driver location, the direction where they are going, and the direction you are heading to. So we try to con reduce this into like search problem. Uh, another interesting use case is the, we call this like fulfillment, which is like a rider driver matching. So think about like in the, the driver, the driver may be actually constantly moving, right? So actually they can move fast. Every second they're like, they could be like meters or tens of meters like away. So one unique challenge for Uber search <clears throat> is that we actually do real-time ingestion and real-time freshness. This is actually different from Lucene, which Lucene provides NRT, the near real-time. But at Uber, we actually require real-time. So later on the slides, I'm going to talk about some of the interesting work that we did and extended over the Apache within the vector search algorithm. Um, we also convert this like matching problem into a search problem because considering like the, the writer interest and their intention and also the driver profile, they actually actually many things to consider. For example, the writer may have a preference on the gender a conference on the car itself, so we try to reduce into like a search problem. And because of the recent, the rise of the GNAI, you know, the, the RAG, 
And we also found like a new category of like third problem at Uber, which is to power the GNI use cases. So this example example actually shows me our customer obsession on this category of use cases, where we try to use the chatbot, a chatbot to <coughs> provide the support and answer to the common user questions. <coughs> now you can see like for typical LMM that it may not have the most recent information or the domain specific information about like one particular like writers, their history or their like past support information. So there's a weird like you know the retrieval augmentation comes in that we have to retrieve the relevant information and feed this into the LM. Um, so this kind of high level overview of our platform. So we actually built our platform by ourselves, um, built on top of Apache Lucin. One unique interesting power is it provides real time like freshness, not the near real time. And on the ingestion side, we have the streaming ingestion where data is coming in from Flink. We also have a, a capability to offline uh, build the index through like a Spark job. This is also different from like for example Elasticsearch that we want to have a quick way to regenerate the whole world um, so that for like not only for the fast uh, iteration but also for you know data correction, snapshotting, disaster recovery. And on the serving side, we have this like scatter gather architecture where we have a state for like nodes that contain the search index and there's an aggregator which also is a load balancer to uh, like sketch, uh, dispatch the query to each node and the fetch results back. And because our data is highly <coughs> geo data related, so we actually do the geo sharding which has a latitude based like sharding and high scan based sharding. <coughs> So Hexagon is based on the library we call S3 that was built and open source like by Uber. Uh, and because of the large number of the index that we have, we actually have a leverage on the static ranking and early termination. So our like items or dishes, uh, all the grocery items are actually pre-ordered based on the like conversion rate, which is like you know think about how popular this odd item is. So the stack running can help us to greatly reduce uh, like the computation time and also the resources. And lastly, one of the one of the key reason we build our platform is to integrate like with our the overall uh, architecture. Uh, sorry, the overall uh, like Uber tech stack. Uh, this is a high level overview of our architecture how it looks like. So so our data is stored in you know, like a source of truth. This can be like Hive table, can be MySQL, or can be Cassandra like where there's a source of truth. And then we run like Spark job to populate this um, like into like a Kiwi store. So you can think of this more like uh, like a row store that we store the analyzed document like for quick lookup, which is useful for the calculating the delta during the real time ingestion. And then we run another Spark job to generate the index and store them into a remote storage. It can be object store and can be like HDFS. And this is our main serving stack that the, the shard can download data. We call this like base index. Uh, and then the query system will uh, query the aggregator and the fetch data from each, each server. Uh, the live ingestion is, is, is an interesting part. I talk about the, the real time data freshness, right? So we actually build this live index data structure uh, by ourselves. This is not like losing data structure. Um, but it has capability to take a snapshot to reduce memory pressure. So we call this like snapshot file. Uh, and you can see there's also like a flink part which is for processing the, uh, the data ingestion from the source of truth and then we can calculate some delta. The purpose is to reduce uh, the number of like uh, changes um, so that like think about like, like say you have a, have a store description if only one keyword has changed, then have we don't have to re-index the entire thing, but only the delta changes. So like why vector search? So we started exploration in the past uh, few years, and we found out that this is actually really powerful technology. So on the left hand side, there's like one example, think about is it like from the Uber East case. So, you know, assume the user wants a query, like say, hey, he wants like a hot, hot drinks. Then, uh, 
from the 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 vectors or the vectors we are able to derive the semantic similarities so we can return results like the hot cider or, or sorry apple cider or hot coca or Starbucks coffees that may or may not like be able to be retrieved by the traditional like lexical search. Um, on the other side, which is also interesting, we found that this is actually a real like quick case from the our maps case. Um, so the user has a typo in their like budget, like a car, uh, and uh, they also have some like the context provided. So with the lexical search, we are now able to retrieve any particular useful results. But with a semantic search, we are able to return the, the location where the user really desires. So by incorporating semantic search and the vector search, like we found like the search quality actually increased significantly for our both the delivery and the maps use cases. So this actually got us like very excited on this topic. Um, so I will not go into detail as you many of you should know like the HNSW, which is a state of art, like algorithm, like it runs on CPU. Uh, so this is available uh, in Lucy 9, and we build our solution on top of that. Uh, so you can think how like, at a very high level, this is like a graph algorithm, and this is like our query vector. And given like one point, we're going to walk through the graph, trying to figure out what's the top end points that are close to this, this query vector. And uh, notably, this, this algorithm implemented in Lucene um, that is also like, um, like uh, provides a real-time search semantics because in the Lucene segment, it's, it uses like the off-heat, um, like HW graph, this data structure. But interestingly enough, it all has an unkeep one, which is used for the graph construction. And we actually, we build our solution leveraging that, that added the, the real-time ingestion support, which means that at the time you modify this group, this graph, you can also concurrently like read it and search it. So this is how we uh, build our vector search solution. Um, so something interesting is that like we added the live ingestion support uh, to the vector search graph. Uh, and uh, you can see there are actually three parts of index. So as mentioned, there's like a base, which is Lucene segment. Uh, there's like snapshot, which also like Lucene segment. And there's like live data structure. And upon the query time, we'll issue the query to each of these and then derive like combined view as a final result. So that's how we support the live updates. So just better uh, understand the, the algorithm, like, you know, so for the live index, uh, it's like in-memory data structure coming just from Kafka, we actually implement some like log-free, like data structure algorithms to allow concurrent read and write. So we use Tombstone to support deletes, and we also have this op heap skip list for like faster, quick access. And uh, it allows like updates of vector value using the unheap HNSW graph. This is this, the this structure from Lucene. And for snapshot text, this is uh, like a Lucene index. Um, this is practically persisted from the live index. And uh, it's a much compact form compared to live index. So you can think how like we use live index only for the recent delta like value. Um, and uh, this is a snapshot, it's also a layer over the, the base index, that's how we derive the, the final view. Um, yeah, the others are uh, similar to the lab index in terms of like tombstone. So now I'm going to give like one example to show how the live updates works. So assuming in this graph we have one, like a vector, uh, like, uh, like say vector one with doc ID one we are going to update this to like a vector one prime. Um, so conceptually you can think of what we want to do is that like in this graph, we have this vector one. And we want to um, update this into a new node, which is like vector one prime here. And then cut all the edges from this graph. 
So conceptually, we want to do this, but because Lucene data structure is mutable, that we cannot easily do this like in place. Um, but instead, we going to simulate this through the three layers. Um, and uh, before I go into the how the algorithm works, so we actually leverage on the pre-filter in the existing Lucene APIs uh, for this support. So this pre-filter you can think of is um, parameter to the KN search API in Lucene, which takes like a list of accepted docs so that instead of like iterating the entire graph, it will go into iterate over the nodes in the graph that is in this like a savvy docs. Um, so this is a very powerful way to do the pre-filter and without like you know like losing uh, the results as compared to the like the post filter. Um, and so, so let's see how we are going to do this with the live updates. So the this is the, the current setup. Like, you know, assuming that we have this graph is a vector one, we also have some other like nodes, like seven, nine, ten, and eight, in the snapshot. We also have eleven and twelve in the live. Now we are going to update like the vector one. So first of all, we are going to ingest this vector one into the live index. So and we will assign a new doc ID, which is like 13, which is like this. Uh, and next, we are going to track that the original vector one in the base is deleted or is removed, right? So we do this through like a special posting list called under underscore deleted, uh, which is help us to track which documents are deleted in both like either in base index or snapshot index. So we're just like adding it here. And then, um, and then, and then that's it. So essentially, this deleted doc is used for book, bookkeeping, right? So let's look at like what, how it happens during the query time. So assuming we want to run a KM query, I want to find the top two results. And the accepted docs which are the pre-filters are, uh, are like this. So which means like all the documents are wanted except two things. One is that the one is already removed because it was updated to doc ID 13. And the three and 10 are like not in this because let's say we have some other filtering criteria, right? So. So then just for the sake of the, um, this example, so let's see how it works. So, so this still again, this is like the, our target vector. So we're starting with two, and then we walk down this graph like zero, and then four, and four should be the candidate, um, because it's in top K, and then we'll go to like a one. But here, because one is not accepted, then it will ignore one. And then we'll go to the, the next closest, which is like five. So, and then the result you can see from the base we return is like four and zero, but not one, even though one is closer to the core vector, but, but it's, it's filtered. So similarly, we're going to walk through the, the snapshot. And uh, like we uh, navigate through 10, but 10 is not desired because 10 is not in the accepted like docs. Uh, then we will return like seven and nine as the closest one. And then lastly, we'll go with the, like the live. So all of the three actually are new documents. So we are, we are going to pick like, okay, 12 and 13, like other candidates. And now we got the, you know, the top two results from each, right, the live, snapshot and base. And then we're going to do like a final merge and compare their like similarity to pick the top two, which is like four and 12. So this is how we, you know, supported the live ingestion of vector updates, um, like in our search engine. So uh, here I'm going to talk about some of the future and ongoing work that we're doing and thinking about. So uh, a few months ago, we discovered like this blog from NVIDIA 
uh, which they published that uh, they can achieve like significant speed up compared to um, like HNSW on CPU uh, with GPU. So uh, they actually build like a totally different algorithm from the HNSW algorithm that can fit into the GPU. So for people who are familiar with GPU, you know like GPU is, is very useful for like machine learning training uh, because it, based on the architecture of the GPU, it allows like multiple concurrent like computation, like in batches, right? So they actually changed their, they develop a new algorithm like on the vector search algorithm that can run on GPU. So from their benchmark report, uh, they showed they're able to achieve like you know, 10x, 20x speed up both on the throughput and also on the latency reduction. So this, um, so they contribute this work to, or they join this work with a, uh, a company behind another open source technology called Mewers, which is written in uh, C++ and Go. And they, we, they publish this kind of report. They even claim this kind of achieve like 50x like in improvements. Um, so we took like, like the, this algorithm, which is a, it's pretty cool. It's, a, it's called like a Kagura. This is from like NVIDIA. Um, and they explain how they are able to run this GPU algorithm. Um, and uh, they actually also, so NVIDIA published uh, a library called Rupt. Uh, so that is uh, like written in C++ <clears throat> so that they can build as a like, library for others to to integrate um, and build. So this is a really nice like uh, research paper. So if I'm interested in this hobby, I highly recommend to, to read it. Um, and in, we also found out there's actually ongoing work uh, from the Lucene community called Lucene CVS. So I found they have actually have an upcoming talk at the Berlin Buzzword next week. So I'm actually interested in this topic as well. So in case you are visiting Berlin, then this can get some like latest updates from them, which is the is an exploration work like using the GNI over the Kagura algorithm, uh, like trying to integrate this like into Lucene as, as a plugin. And from their benchmark, it show like two to four x latency improvement. Um, and in the meantime, at Uber, we are actually also looking into um, the Mewers and the slash nowhere integration. So Mewer, <coughs> nowhere is like Lucene, is kind of the search engine core to Mewers this system. Uh, but this is written in C++ and it's a kind of run like uh, locally as a library. So it has a plugin over like other um, <coughs> popular uh, vector search libraries like Fast, Raft, HNSW leap. Um, so this is the Mewers architecture and nowhere is here you can think of as a, like, as, as, a, as a library, as a core, just like we've seen. <clears throat> so we're also exploring the possibility of integrating Mewers into Lucene as a plugin so that we can like, like leverage like GPU. Um, so maybe hopefully in you know, some other future uh, conference like coming like over code, we can talk about our you know, more updates. Um, okay, so that's my overall talk. Yeah, thank you. Any questions?